welcome to everybody. It's a great event. I want to welcome Mayor Broom, welcome the Governor, uh, John Bell Edwards, of course, Nurse Brown, who we'll be talking about. Also, Senator Regina Barrow, who's hiding back there, for coming to the event. I know all of you are very busy in what you're doing, but I want to thank you for all the work you've done to keep us safe here in, the, in, in, uh, in Baton Rouge and also in the state of Louisiana. I just uh, had a sidebar with the governor, and I told him, I said, I know you get criticized a lot, but, you know, you got to make those tough decisions. And uh, we, we are behind you, Governor, so thank you for what you're doing. Um, as most of you know, we're going to honor a very special person today. Uh, Nurse Carla Brown has been on a personal crusade since the death of her husband last year from COVID-19. Her mission is to vaccinate everyone she can, one person at a time, as the CEO of Louisiana Healthcare Connection, we follow with that. Our goal is to transform healthcare here in Louisiana, one person at a time. We want to help amplify Nurse Brown's voice in this fight against COVID. And that's why we're featuring her in a PSA that's going to run across the state. She is an inspiring advocate, and we are humbled by the opportunity to have her as our, spokes, as our spokesperson. I did just spend a few minutes with her speaking before and I will tell you, I'm ready to get vaccinated again. So maybe my booster, <laughs> my booster shot, I'll come see you. So we would like to, Richard, we can play the, we're gonna, if you guys would turn around, we're going to play the PSA for you on the back TV. One year ago, I lost the love of my life to COVID. We didn't have a vaccine then, but we do now. As a nurse, I knew that was something I can do to help people stay safe from this terrible virus. But I'm just one person. I can't vaccinate everyone. That's why I'm asking for your help. If you haven't been vaccinated, please go get your vaccine today and may God bless you all. So thank you very much, Nurse Brown, for that message. It's a very powerful message. Um, and we want to continue to bring that you know, to the residents and citizens of Louisiana. So the next uh, individual I'm going to give the podium over to really needs no introduction. But if I may, real quick, Governor, I was trying to think back to the governor's first and through the second term of every, uh, it seems like every natural disaster, or catastrophic <laughs> event that could occur has occurred under your watch. Uh, from 100-year rain and flood, 1,000-year rain and flood, another 100-year rain to now COVID, and here we are again in hurricane season. So, Governor, I want to thank you very much for all the work you do. L ladies and gentlemen, our Governor of Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Jamie, and thank all of you for being here today. Um, and I want to especially thank the mayor uh, Sharon Weston Broom for being here, Senator Regina Barrow, uh, State Representative Edmund Jordan, thank you for being here, and uh, Nurse Carla, most of all, thank you not just for being here, but primarily for all the work that you've been doing. And Jamie, I appreciate the introduction and the partnership um, that, that you have with the state and with your initiative here today. You know, St. Francis of Assisi calls for us to be instruments of peace. And where there's hatred, let me so love where there's injury, pardon, where there's doubt, faith, where there's despair, hope, where there's darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. Uh, this past year has been filled with much despair, darkness, and sadness. Today alone, we announced 122 deaths in Louisiana because of COVID-19. We've lost over 11,500 since the beginning of the pandemic of our fellow Louisianans. And in that number is Nurse Carla Brown's husband, David, as you just saw in the PSA. But in the midst of her despair, Nurse Carla found a way to bring hope and light to others and to give them an opportunity um, to ensure that they don't have to experience the same heartbreak that she experienced. And she made it her personal mission to vaccinate as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. And both of those things are important. Doing the right thing and doing it now, uh, because there's a real sense of urgency about the pandemic now that with the advent of the Delta variant, which is obviously much more transmissible 
and it is largely responsible for this surge we're seeing across the country that is being felt here in Louisiana more than anywhere else. It was a good while back that I first met Nurse Carla, and at that time she had just vaccinated a little over a thousand uh, people, and she set a new goal of getting to 2,000. Well, now she has surpassed that goal, um, and I suspect her goal is now 3,000. I hope it is. Uh, and she's doing that primarily now through door-to-door -door outreach. Uh, and, and I wish that we had a thousand more Nurse Carlos, but I will tell you, she inspired an initiative uh, and it's named uh, the Nurse Carla Initiative at LDH. We're very, you know, uh, good about coming up with these names, right? Uh, and, and so far, they've hired and onboarded 14 nurses to do what she's doing, but they're doing it in every region across the state of Louisiana with vaccine events and community outreach, um, and it's making a real difference. And so we thank you not just for your work, but for the inspiration uh, that you have provided to us. Um, and as you just saw, uh, she's worked with Louisiana Healthcare Connections on a public service announcement that I think is going to be very impactful. I hope and pray that it will be. Uh, so our state owes Nurse Carla a tremendous amount of gratitude, and that's why we're here today. Um, and in recognition of her work, Louisiana Healthcare Connections is awarding Nurse Carla a $25,000 honorarium. And I wanted to be here to make sure that we made that announcement uh, together. And I want to thank Louisiana Healthcare Connections and Jamie Schlotman. Um, and I want you to know, uh, Nurse Carla, that this is just a small token of our appreciation. It in no way reflects uh, just how sincerely uh, indebted we are to you for your work. Uh, so we really appreciate you for, for the lives that you've saved and the hope that you've sowed across the Baton Rouge region. So we thank you for your incredible work. We thank you for being an instrument of peace. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Edwards, and thank you, Jamie and Louisiana Healthcare Connections. Uh, this is an exciting day because we're celebrating someone who is transforming lives. You know, we hear the stories day in and day out in terms of the impact of COVID-19. But I remember back in March of last year when I heard about a nurse that was on a mission. She was on a mission to offer a response to encourage her community and the citizens to get tested then, and then to get vaccinated. I remember she was motivated from a heart of loss that she didn't want anyone else to experience, Governor, the loss of her husband. So she made it her mission to ensure that she could vaccinate as many people as possible she made it her mission to save as many people as possible. And since then, I'm so glad that I've had the privilege of knowing Nurse Carla. I've had the privilege of seeing her work on the ground, administering these life-saving vaccines. And she has truly come such a long way since I met her in March. You know, um, Oftentimes, people believe that you have to have a title or a position to change the trajectory of a life or a community. Well, you see, Nurse Carla is a demonstration that you don't have to have either. Although she had the title of a nurse, <laughs> she didn't have title of governor or mayor or anyone else to go out and do the work and offer a response to those that were in need. That is true service to humanity. 
That is truly what makes her a great woman. She wasn't hungry for a title or a position or to be on this show or that show. It all evolved. It evolved because she had a genuine, authentic care and concern for her fellow, fellow human being. And so now, she is our MVP. Our MVP. And we are part of her team, Governor, as she does the work. But the truth is, we need everyone else to join Nurse Carla's team. And how do you get on that team? You don't have to apply, but you can go get vaccinated to get on her team. And that's what we want to encourage everyone. We're doing it day in and day out. Go get vaccinated. See what is happening with the faces of our friends and our families that we don't see anymore that we've lost to COVID-19. Let me just say this. We hear a lot of different reasons, Nurse Carla, Jamie, why people won't get vaccinated. But let me just say that polio, tetanus, measles, influenza, hepatitis B, hepatitis A, rubella, whooping cough, uh, mumps, chicken pox, diphtheria, and the list goes on of diseases that have been controlled by vaccines. And you know, I, I don't remember it, but I, I do remember starting school and I had to have a vaccine before I started school. And many students today do. And so I would encourage everyone to think about what can happen in terms of saving lives, to register for a vaccination as soon as possible. We don't want to lose another soul to COVID-19. But we do want to thank Nurse Carla for all of her work and dedication. Nurse Carla, I'm on your team. Whatever you tell me to do, you got it. <laughs> and we honor you today. And we also honor the countless other medical professionals who are out there on the front lines day in and day out. They've been on the front lines since March of 2020. So it's going to take all of us, as Nurse Carla has demonstrated. Let's get on the team, let's do the work, and let's get vaccinated. Thank you, Nurse Carla. Thank you. Yeah. Here we go. Can you hear everybody? I don't know. It's not. No, it's not socially distancing. Kind of smile. I don't think you're going to be able to get that through the drive-in window. <laughs> <laughs> In the bank. We do. <laughs> We do have a real check. <laughs> I'm happy to say. Ms. <laughs> Carla, would you like to make some comments? Yes, We'd love please. to hear too. Good evening to everyone. And thank you all so much. But I would like to first give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who have brought me from a dark place of taking one life to saving so many others. And I thank you, Governor. And I thank you, the mayor. All I want to do is save lives for you. All I ask that you get vaccinated. It's no reason for nobody to die now. We have a vaccine. All I can do is plead with you, take the vaccine, save your family inner circle. I want to thank Missy Hastings, she's out there. She has been my right hand, guys, when we're out there late hours at night, she's there, giving me the strength to go on. I want to thank Paul Bartolome because this is a twofold ministry. They're vaccinating people at the drugstore while we're taking it to the streets. So that's how we're able to try to get as many people vaccinated. 
And I want to also say a special thanks to you again. Because I had a heart to educate, but I did not have the vaccine. And I'm so thankful the mayor met with us in uh, Paul Bartolome and set things in motion to re give me the vaccine in my hand. So when I knock on the door, I can actually give you the vaccine. So it's no excuse now. If you don't want to go out, we're bringing it to you. And all I can say, thank you. But remember the nurses and doctors. Right now, their lives is turned upside down. They cannot go home and hug loved ones because they are still caring for those with the COVID vaccine, with the COVID disease, I'm sorry. So all I can ask to ease their burden, get vaccinated and get it now. Thank you all. It's very humbling, um, and I'm very thankful. But our mission and missionary has got to continue. Look at our hospitals, y'all. They are still overwhelmed. So we still got a lot of work to do. But unto that, I'm, I'm very grateful. What's your message to people when you go door to door? We're at a place now that we can't say I'm a wait. This Delta variant is taking lives and it's hitting the young age. So all I can say now is that this enemy has empowered itself. So empower your combat is the vaccine. Moderna, Pfizer, just get the vaccine. Put up a fight for your life. You don't have to die. The vaccine was made to save us. That's all I can say to them. Nurse Brown, I know it's been quite an emotional day for you. Can you tell us maybe about a happy story when you went out to vaccinate someone? Just uh, maybe something that funny that caught you off guard that just warmed your heart? Yeah, uh, when uh, Miss and I had went into a particular home, uh, the wife received the vaccine but the husband was so adamant he wasn't going to take it. And so Miss and I told him, said, that's okay, we'll be back within two weeks and you'll take it. So uh, when we went to the home to give him his vaccine, he said, you know, y'all are some doggone persistent women, but nevertheless, I'm going to take this vaccine because I'm tired of looking at you. <laughs> but he took the vaccine. So that was our happy moment. <laughs> Would you like to see other nurses around the state do the same thing? Yes, sir, and I think as the governor and the mayor has alluded to, they are training nurses now, because we need the help. Miss and I have been at this, and I think we only took a break when we went to uh, Washington, D.C., but we're out here almost six days a week, and we're not getting home till 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, so. But it's a good overwhelm, because the calls are coming in. Uh, we are getting husband, wives, and children now being vaccinated before it was just the elderly. So we're seeing a change coming through. Are you optimistic that we'll get through this? I'm very optimistic. Yes, indeed. We will conquer. We will win. I'm determined we're going to win. When you found out they named a scholarship after you or a program after you, what, tell, what, how did that just feel when that happened? It's quite an honor. It is, and all I can say, your gifts will make room for you. If you just continue to stay humble and true and continue to serve. We're Louisiana Healthcare Connection. We are in government-sponsored health care. We're the largest Medicaid plan here in the state of Louisiana. We're statewide with about 600 employees, and we serve over 530,000 residents 
uh, here in Louisiana on Medicaid. Uh, we're here today to honor Nurse Brown, uh, mainly because of her efforts to get people vaccinated. We try very, very hard to get our population that we serve uh, vaccinated on a daily basis and actually have started doing more and more at home vaccinations. We found going to the home is how to get the message out. So when we found out about uh, Nurse Brown and what she was doing, we definitely wanted to be a part of it. Uh, we had a big event at uh, Borlawn Pharmacy uh, that was a couple weeks ago, and so we've been working with them and working with her. Uh, but this is the way we're going to get everybody vaccinated, it's door to door. Has she served as an inspiration to others to uh, help people get the vaccine? Yeah, I mean, just right there I had to close the program, the ceremony, and it was pretty hard to follow her with what she's saying. And quite, when you listen to her story, listen to her talk to you, uh, it's a very comforting message, it's a very educational message, and uh, it's, I would beg to differ, it would be very hard for somebody to turn her down uh, when she came to your doorstep. What would you like to say to the unvaccinated population around the state? You know, I, I, I listen to people and I hear that it's a personal decision. I mean, for me personally, I have an 85-year-old mother in memory care fighting dementia, and the only way I could see her was to get vaccinated. So my entire family, including both my boys at LSU, are vaccinated. My wife is vaccinated. So for people that are unvaccinated, maybe not do it for yourself, but why don't we do it for everybody else? I am glad that we're here to honor a true community activist in Nurse Carla Brown. Uh, Nurse Brown has been on the ground uh, getting vaccinations to citizens in our community. Um, she sees firsthand and knows firsthand the impact that COVID-19 has had uh, on citizens in our community first of all, with her own loss of her husband. And so she hasn't asked for anything other than give me the vaccines and I'll do the work. And so I am so glad that Louisiana Healthcare Connections, the governor's office, uh, has gathered to honor her today uh, for the work that she continues to do to help mitigate COVID-19 in our community by encouraging and vaccinating citizens in our community. What is your message right now to the unvaccinated population of East Baton Rouge Parish? To those who are unvaccinated, please don't wait another day, don't wait another moment. Um, you have to see the impact of COVID-19 that it is having on your friends, your family, uh, people that you know who are either hospitalized or some whom we have lost to COVID-19. So don't risk it. Don't take a chance for the health of yourself, your family, and your friends. Go get vaccinated.